A large percentage of all performance problems is database related. That's why JProfiler has a lot of database related functionality. JProfiler 8 expands on JDBC, JPA and Hibernate by adding probes from the NoSQL and Big Data arena. In this screencast I will be showing the MongoDB probe. As an example I'll profile the Vertex web demo application which uses MongoDB as a storage option. In order to make sure that MongoDB activity is recorded right from the beginning I've configured an initial recording profile that includes the MongoDB probe. So let's go and Vertex has started up and we can go to the databases section and look for the MongoDB probe. Let's first go to the events view where we can see what happens in a chronological fashion. Since this is a demo application it first deletes all the previously existing data here. We can see it deletes the albums and the users collections and it then goes on to insert data into them by updating documents with specific IDs. You can also see that all primitive data is replaced by question marks. Why is it doing that? On the one hand that conserves a lot of memory and on the other hand it allows us to build better hotspots. If we go to the hotspots view we can see that these four update operations into the albums collection result in a single row in the hotspots view which is much more useful than having a separate hotspot for each ID. The events view is actually not available by default. It has to be enabled in the MongoDB probe configuration, which is under session settings, database settings, MongoDB. There's a couple of options here. I have selected record single events. There's also an option to annotate MongoDB database operations into the CPU call tree view and to keep primitive data that will get rid of the question marks. So that might be useful in a debugging scenario. Let's go back to our demo application and do something with it. We bring up the browser and access the application. So the index page lists those four albums. Presumably they came from the database. Let's check. Right, here is a query event invoked find on the albums collection. Let's create some more activity here. Let's log in. Then we add a couple of albums to the cart and we submit the order. So that should have affected the database somehow. Let's go and see. There's a slightly more complex query than the previous one for the login and then there is the creation of a document in the orders collection. So in a real-world application where a lot more data is handled, you will see retrieve data events and then there will also be insert events where documents with unique IDs are created. The other NoSQL probes, Cassandra and HBase, are similarly structured to the MongoDB probe. They just have different event types. And also note that as for all probes, you also have the telemetries and the probe tracker at your disposal.